Hey everybody, Chris here. I told you I'd be back when I finished the sequencer thing, and it's done. So, here it is. Ta-da! And I, I called it the Kana Music and Art 10-Step Sequencer. Doesn't that look official? Of course, it's done with a Brother labeling machine. Uh, all of the features that we talked about on the last video are here. So I'm going to go through it. Uh, now that the uh, thing is um, finished, we have a few other features, but basically uh, we can set it for auto run, and the audio is already up. So each step cycles through, and each one of these knobs is a voltage control, and when it gets there... So on the old one, if you if you remember, it had six steps because that's all I had available on the breadboard, but now I can take advantage of the, the full range of this technology and use ten steps. We can turn the rate up, of course. As fast as we want. So it just becomes noise, or we can slow way down. But unlike last time, there's another feature here called Step Reset, which for you not into sequencers probably wouldn't know about, and here it is. I can take the number of steps and turn it down from 10 down to 1. So use the switch. See, that isn't lighting up now, and we can keep going down. There's 4, 3, 2, and one. And if I turn up the radio, you'll just hear that one note repeating. And it can be very interesting. So we have that feature, and of course we can turn it on manual input and advance one step at a time. Or we can use audio sync. Let's press play over here. And now it's playing automatically, triggered by a rhythm track coming from this master synthesizer over here. Or we can go to. Works beautifully. Now, I know what you're saying to yourself. Gosh, Chris, that's great. You just made a machine that makes random bleeps and bloops. Well, guess what? We can do more than that, as I'm about to show you. Okay, so, here's the thing we can do now, which I could have done before, but it's much easier with all the little knobbies that I put on here that I can reach with my sausage fingers. And what I can do is I can go step by step and tune each step for a specific note more easily now that everything's all laid out nicely like this. So I'm going to turn on the audio so we can hear it again. Let's see, where are we? Okay, so let me turn that up a little bit. Now you hear that note, that's coming from here, and it's this step. All the way past audio range on both ends. So what I can do is I can reference a note from here now. I can step to the next step and program in. And I can just keep going like this, which I will.
painful to listen to, I know, but it, it's what you have to do. Okay, now, what does that sound like when we put it all together? It actually sounds kind of nice, as you'll hear. And we switch this to this output. Now listen to this. Musical! It's a C major arpeggio. And now we can turn the rate up. Or down. And so on like that. Or if you speed it up and change the number of steps, it, it takes on a different feel. And so on like that. Now there's another trick we can do with this other synthesizer, which I'll show you here in a second. So there's a neat little trick you can do with this synthesizer because it has two tone generators built in which are controllable independently. You can actually make one synthesizer influence another and get some pretty cool effects, right? So what I've got here is that same sequence you heard me set up a minute ago. And I've set up the second tone source to be controlled and influenced by this keyboard, but it's actually being played by this one. So if I set this to run, you'll hear a nice sequence. Okay, but look what happens if I play a note over here. Now we have a different interval, and it's playing in parallel, a fifth. I can play any interval. Here's a third. Here's a minor second. Sounds pretty weird. Here's another octave. Here's another octave. Even higher. There's a two octaves and a fifth. An octave and a fifth. Neat sounds. And then we can mess with this synthesizer and do all sorts of interesting things here too. I could change the waveform of these and make a nice mellow sound. We can change the filter settings. That really didn't do much. And by changing the interval over here, there's just no end to the fun, I'm telling you. This analog stuff is so great because there are no steps, it's not digital, there's no quantization. It's all what you see is what you get. I'm going to turn this off. So, I had so much fun building this guy that I've decided I'm going to build another one. Even bigger, with 16 stages and the ability to go forward, backward, or forward and backward, and have it interact with this guy. It'll be mounted down here, and it'll be a whole nother level. That's from Mad TV. Sorry I stole it. So, once again, be watching this space for more wackiness from Chris's basement. Over and out.